Hello, this is video number 12. I'm going to go over properties of vectors. This is the first video going over vectors. We're going to be using vectors a whole bunch in this class. So the next few videos are going to be really important. So this is a review slide. We've seen it before that there are two types of quantities that we talk about, scalars and vectors. So scalars are fully described by a single number Examples that we've seen, time, distance, speed, time, right? You can say five seconds, distance, six meters, etc. just a number and a unit. Vectors, on the other hand, require a magnitude and a direction. So we've seen displacement, velocity, and acceleration. If you talk about velocity, you've got to say, okay, we're going 60 miles per hour northeast. You have that direction. So far, we've only seen one-dimensional motion where we used plus or minus to describe motion to the right or to the left, but soon we're going to start talking about two-dimensional motion, so we have to describe direction with a vector. So to re represent vectors, there's a graphical way, and that is to use arrows. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude, so the amount, and the angle represents the direction. This particular picture, I have a vector and there are three different ways to represent the direction of that vector. You see that the angle is 30 degrees in the picture, and that would be a counterclockwise angle. So that would be 30 degrees. However, you could also represent an angle as a clockwise angle. Both of these are with respect to the positive x-axis, which is along to the right here. So a clockwise angle would be this way. So what angle did you have to use to go this way, well, you have 360 for the whole circle, so this angle will be 330 degrees. Now, when we go clockwise instead of counterclockwise, to tell somebody that we went clockwise, we actually use a negative. Because if you just say the angle is 330 degrees, they're going to think that you went counterclockwise and that you actually have a vector going down this way. But that's not the case. Third notation is the compass angle notation. So this is this uses northeast southwest. So if you have the same vector here, well to the right here is east and up here is north, right? This is west here and this is south. So the compass angle notation, well first of all you would say the east direction and then you have to say, okay, did you go north or south of east? Well, we went upward here, which is north. So we went north of east. I always write the second direction first, though. That way, then I know, okay, I have east. Did I go north or south? And we went 30 degrees north of it. So it would be 30 degrees north of east. So just to give one more example to make sure this is clear, and why you should always say the second direction first. So let's say that we have an angle this way, and this is 30 degrees right here. How would you specify this, the direction of this vector here? Well, first of all, you're going to want to say this north direction here, and then you have to figure out, okay, did I go east or west of this north direction? Well, I went this way, so I went west, so you would say west of north. And again, you went 30 degrees west of north. So you see that if you specify the second direction first, and it's easier to tell, okay, did you go east or west of that? The last thing I'd like to do in this video is go over a few properties of vectors. First property here is that two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. So which vectors are equal in this picture? A lot of you guys are going to see that vectors a and b are the same. They're in the same direction. They're the same length. So that is true that vector a is equal to vector b. And this sign I'm writing above just means that it's a vector. Usually when I type it, I use a bold letter. But did you remember to use vector c here? It also has the same length and same direction. Just the fact that it's down here versus up here does not make a difference. Second property of vectors is related to what we just talked about, 
that you can move a vector anywhere you want, parallel to itself, meaning which you're not changing the direction of it, and you haven't changed a vector. So in this picture here, we have moved vector A, which was here, and we have moved it here to the tip of vector B, and we haven't changed anything. And this is useful when we start talking about vector addition, which we will be doing in the next video. The third property is that the negative of a vector is a vector of the same length, but pointing in this opposite direction. So if vector A is pointing up, that means vector negative B, neg sorry, negative A is pointing down, but it still has the same length, the same magnitude, just the opposite direction. So that's all for video number 12. The next video will be going over how to add vectors, so it was very useful to learn these properties of vectors.